So this demo is all about something called file handlers. And this isn't strictly a SharePoint framework or a client-side development thing, but I think it's an interesting example of how you could take your client-side development skills and extend them into solving other problems. So what we have is a project that is a uh, file handler. And you might say to yourself, Patrick, what is a file handler? That is a great question. A file handler is a piece of functionality that allows you to integrate tightly into the SharePoint or OneDrive UI and handle custom file types. So I'll just show you this real quick. So I've got a neat document library here with a bunch of markdown files. And I can actually go in here and open. And I've got these uh, custom file handlers here. And we're going to click this one. And there's two of them there because I have a uh, poor dev environment hygiene. But you can see we've now ended up on localhost and we're editing my file. So this is file has content and I can do markdown and here is some stuff and my preview updates. And, and what this file handler lets us do, uh, we've got our, our, uh, our markdown here and you might say, well, I've seen a markdown editor before, but if we hit save, we're actually gonna save and close just to get that cleaned up. Uh, we get little UI updates and that's going to end up uh, going in a big circle and closing our window. But we get our file updated back here in the website. And you say, well, Markdown is not perhaps uh, the most exciting example, but it is a great example to show that this could be any propri proprietary file type. So you might have a custom image format, a custom mapping format, some type of uh, you know, I don't know, AutoCAD rendering format, something like that, that we natively don't support in the service, but you would like to provide some functionality. So file handlers give you an excellent hook to do that. And they give you a hook in uh, three main ways. You can actually uh, create a new file. It's gonna show up here integrated right into the new menu. It's gonna show up here under open and as you can see, you could actually register multiple file handlers for a given extension. And it's also going to uh, be built into the preview functionality. So if I hit preview, you're going to get the Office 365 Microsoft rendered bar at the top here, and then below that an iframe, which again is pointing to our local host. And here is just uh, the, the preview of the content with no editor supplied. And you can actually scroll through uh, all the files uh, in your thing, and it'll invoke correctly our custom file handler and our preview. Um, you can see my test content is all very, very interesting. It says things like my heading and so forth. But how does this all work? And where is this, where can I see this? So we've created a new repository uh, just made public this morning called uh, Kentoso. And so that repository under PNP is somewhere we are looking to put uh, ISV or partner focused samples that we uh, right. So this right now, we aren't looking for contributions here, uh, but we're working on figuring out how that might work uh, because these are meant to be reference samples, uh, not really one. So if you have ideas for samples, please do keep putting them in the same spot, the sample galleries. That is the appropriate place uh, for all the community samples. But these are going to be things we use in our discussions with partners um, that point out certain specific bits of technology. So what is a file handler? Well, under the hood, a file handler really is an Azure Active Directory application. And so here's our file handler registration. Um, and you can see all the settings, but in your Azure Active Directory application, you insert into the add-ins property a uh, manifest here. And this manifest describes your file handler. And really what it does is give you some you know, some names and version numbers and things, and you make up an ID, that's whatever you want. But the important bit here is you give it icons and you give it uh, URLs to different actions. So there's a new file action and we have a, a URL here that's just one we gave it. So that's uh, to create and then so forth off. I don't, there's, sorry, multiple scroll bars. So there's edit and there's preview are all defined here uh, in this uh, manifest. And that's how we know where to launch our file handlers from. So when I hit, for example, open, what it's really doing is posting a bunch of information to my file handler. And this file handler sample we put together uh, with a couple interesting things I think uh, folks could find uh, fascinating is that uh, this is built with Next.js, which is something I personally hadn't used prior to this, but found to be uh, very helpful for developing an application like this. 
And it's got a bunch of great capabilities, one of which is it does a lot of the uh, React and Webpack stuff behind the scenes for you. So, for example, it does great routing. So if you want to create, you could just create them under the Pages folder. And, for example, our action page, and this bracket action is a next syntax to just tell you that we could have multiple actions. And we actually pick off our action here from the query. That actually is the path. Um, which comes in as, as uh, in next as query, and we get our action. And we can do some other things. And so I've added in a bunch of code tours. I'm not going to go through each code tour here in the interest of time, but we do things on the server side. So next has a great capability of splitting server and client side functionality. And there's a lot of additional documentation on that you can check out. But so on our get server side props, this is uh, obviously running on the server side, but we get a post request from SharePoint when we launch the file handler. And then we have a, uh, a helper method here called init handler. And that init handler method, we'll take a quick look at that, it does some stuff for us. So what it does is it either handles uh, knowing that we have a token, meaning we've gone through the off flow, or recognizes that we don't have a token and launches the authentication flow. In this case, we're using uh, the new MSAL for Node library, which is out in, I think they're calling it an alpha still, but it's uh, I found it quite stable for what I was doing in this testing. Um, so you could definitely check that out. Um, but we're using the auth code flow. So we get our auth code, a file handler needs uh, open ID to sign people in, and then files read, write all gives you access to all of the files that uh, the given user has access to. And then we're giving it uh, a redirect URI back to our uh, API uh, login. But all of this uh, is more or less just TypeScript code and React code uh, that you're already familiar with. So it's a great way to take those skills and extend them to solving another problem uh, in the SharePoint OneDrive space. So once we get through our auth flow, we get a token. We actually make a request to graph. This URL uh, comes in, activation params items is going to be a graph URL to the Microsoft Graph. We grab the content of that file, and we actually pass it then into our page as properties. So it's going to come in as part of the properties. This handler is our actual uh, page uh, component function, our functional component for the page. Um, we do some validation of the stuff we think we're getting. We set up our state using hooks. Uh, we do some functions here. So we have a function for handling content change, for save. Uh, again, this is more or less just React programming um, and setting states and things. And so we come down and we have two different views. So we're handling in the same uh, control. We're handling our preview action and we're handling uh, the other two actions, which are edit or create. And so we provide our UI here, uh, some message bars. We're using uh, the Office UI Fabric and uh, Monaco Editor in Next was a fun piece of stuff to set up. So we actually have one of our code tours outlines how to set the Monaco Editor up in Next.js. So uh, we've got a control there. And then we also have uh, a preview control that is just uh, an iframe that takes uh, the content and inserts it into an iframe to isolate it a bit from what we're doing. So we can edit on our page, as you saw here. We can go and we can edit this guy. And we can make all our edits. And when we're ready to save, edit, 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 we're ready to save. We come back to our code. We have two types of save. So these are just functionally binding uh, this flag for true or false. Uh, we'll come up to save, and that means uh, if it's true, we're also going to close the window once we're done. And then uh, we just run some TypeScript logic here. We actually post to our uh, API locally. So our API is part of our application that's then going to run and persist the content back to SharePoint. Uh, we pass it the things it needs to do. No, the app ID, the updated content, and then as well uh, the URL uh, to our item in graph. Uh, we send that back, and then this is all just normal. Uh, if the response worked, uh, we can clear our dirty flag, and we can close the window or set the message bar, take our other appropriate actions. The last piece here I'll show you real quick is file handler. Uh, we did the same thing with the bracket action using that Next.js capability to put multiple routes into a single uh, page, into a single module. So we've got uh, some configuration. Our size limit, we're saying this sample is only going to handle files up to 10 megabytes. 
uh, because that's it's just a sample. Uh, so we've got our handler. We could do save. We're going to handle a save. We come in here. We, uh, again, process some of our inputs, make sure we're good to go. We have our token already. We saved that in the session, so we don't have to re-off. We've actually saved the token in the user's session. So we've got that ready to go. And then we construct uh, a request to get some additional uh, info about our uh, list item, or I'm sorry, about our file item. We get that, make that request in graph, and then we actually put the updated content uh, as a buffer uh, back up to the graph, and you can see our graph URL built out there. And then if, if our request is okay, uh, or not okay rather in this case, we log do some error logging and report an error to uh, the consumer, which in this case is our own page. Otherwise we say 200 and we're good. And so this is a great way to extend, again, your SPFX skills, but also it's a good example of looking at solving a problem and taking, making use of capabilities that already exist inside of SharePoint and OneDrive to help solve these problems. So we have a lot of partners we're looking at working with that have done various, uh, we'll call them clever workarounds to create similar functionality to this file handler. Um, kind of capability and uh, would encourage folks to relook at file handlers as a great option um, on that stuff. You can always read more about file handlers. So that's the overview of file handlers all up. We have some updates to that as well uh, that should be coming out in the next couple of days. And with that, I will close. <music>